This car would destroy any modern F1 car on track. The numbers behind it are wild. 4.5 tons of downforce, 1600 horsepower and 7G in lateral forces. More remarkable still, it can be built today using existing technology. Meet Sebastian Lamour, a former F1 conceptual design engineer who spent 15 years on this design and asked one question. What if we built an F1 car with no rules? While thousands of regulations constrain modern F1 cars, Lemoore got inspiration from the unlimited racing series of Can-Am and Pikes Peak to create something different, the ultimate racing car, and all for a budget a tenth of an F1 team's. So I spoke to him to understand the crazy engineering that could happen if F1 had no rules. Back in the 1960s and 70s, Can-Am was the ultimate playground for engineers. Teams could run whatever engines they wanted, whatever aerodynamics they dreamed up. And the result? Cars with over 1,000 horsepower that made F1 cars of the time look slow. And early Formula 1 actually shared this spirit of innovation. Teams experimented with six-wheeled cars, massive fan-powered downforce, and even skirts that sealed the car to the ground. And there's still a few places where you can race without rules. Pikes Peak, for example. Their unlimited class has no restrictions on power or aerodynamics, and so you end up with cars that look like this. <laughs> So Sebastian took this spirit of innovation and designed something amazing. And to be clear, this isn't just fantasy. He's really thought it through. He set himself three simple rules. The car must be able to run on real circuits, meet basic safety standards, and be buildable with current technology. What started as simulations in R-Factor eventually evolved into something much more serious. Using his background of conceptual F1 aerodynamics, Sebastian used CFD tools to develop and test the car's aerodynamics. The result is the pinnacle. So let's start with how Sebastian plans to power this car. His original idea was wild. He wanted to use a gas turbine engine, like you'd find in a jet, connected to a continuously variable transmission, a CVT, like you'd find on a scooter or that crazy Williams F1 car. And this turbine idea isn't new in motorsport. It's something we saw in IndyCar and F1 in the 60s and 70s, but ultimately it was banned. If you put all the powertrain options on a, on a paper and you, and you see what are the, the advantages and disadvantages of each of them, there, there is no competition for the gas turbine in terms of lightness, in terms of uh, reliability and uh, compactness. But the problem with gas turbines is they have massive inertia. They don't like changing speed quickly. So while incredibly powerful, they're not practical for a race car that needs to accelerate and brake constantly. And Sebastian wants to build this car one day, which probably isn't feasible with a gas turbine. So he went back to the drawing board. And his solution? A twin turbo 1.6 litre V6 producing 1600 horsepower, which is a lot, but there are cars with more than that. So why not add more power? The first thing was to actually uh, try figure out what is the optimum uh, amount of horsepower which is actually uh, usable on a racing track because you know you can put uh, 2000 or 3000 horsepower on the race car but at some stage that doesn't make any sense. Through simulation he found that 1600 horsepower was the sweet spot especially for a real wheel drive car. Any more than that would just spin the wheels even with all the grip that this car has. And if this number sounds familiar, it's because it matches the qualifying power of the 1980s F1 Turbo Monsters, which definitely didn't have anywhere near enough grip for that power. But unlike those 80s cars, Le Pinnacle aims to be sustainable. Instead of fossil fuels, it runs on synthetic fuel, the same technology that Sebastian Vettel has been championing by running his historic F1 cars. The power flows through an 8-speed gearbox with seamless shifts. However, surprisingly, Sebastian is open to it being an automatic, which doesn't sound great until you remember that this car can pull 7G in the corners. And when you're pulling 7G, you probably want the car to handle the gear changes for you. 
which is going to play in a, in a no in another league in terms of uh, speed and, and performances and in terms of on handling it will be better uh, for the driver not to have to cope with changing the gears because the responses time which will be required to drive this car they, they are going to be much uh, much much more much more reduced compared to uh, to, to actual formula one cars so that's the drivetrain but what crazy aerodynamics are on a car that's 15 seconds a lap faster than f1 well before we get into that i need to tell you about today's sponsor on shape they're a professional grade cad system that's revolutionizing how engineers design racing cars and other complex machines and while sebastian spent years refining the pinnacle's design one of his biggest challenges would have been collaboration and version control and that's exactly what makes on shape different it's built entirely in the cloud allowing multiple engineers to work on the same design simultaneously just like google docs but for cad but what really impressed me is that it never crashes and you never lose your work. And Onshape can run in your browser, so you can design anywhere on any device. For all the engineers watching, you can get up to six months of Onshape Professional completely free by visiting onshape.pro forward slash driver61. Now, let's see how Sebastian tackled the most crucial part of the pinnacle, the aerodynamics. So looking at the car, you might notice something's missing. There's no front wing. Instead, the entire car works like one massive upside down aeroplane wing, generating downforce from nose to tail. At 185 miles per hour, the Pinnacle generates 4.5 tons of downforce. That's like having three regular cars pushing down on top of you. And the more load that you have pushing the tires into the track, the faster you can go around corners. The floor is made to be as big as possible, and it starts really far forward at the front suspension channeling air through carefully shaped tunnels that run the entire length of the car. And these tunnels work in harmony with the upper bodywork and the side pods to generate massive downforce. But making this work requires precise control of the airflow. Now, the car has a 45% front weight distribution, so Sebastian needed about 40% of the downforce at the front of the car to keep it stable. Getting this balance right without a front wing took months of development. And the ground effect floor design also has another challenge. It needs to be perfectly sealed to work. In the 1980s, F1 cars used mechanical skirts that physically touched the ground and sealed the floor. But the Pinnacle uses something more sophisticated, a combination of vortices and carefully shaped bodywork to create an invisible seal. This massive ground effect system creates so much downforce and so far forward that modern F1's complex front wings actually become unnecessary. It's simple, but very effective. But the Pinnacle has another trick up its sleeve. It combines this massive ground effect system with something that was banned in F1 after just one race, fan car technology. But this isn't just adding a big fan to a race car. It's a system that changes how the car works at different speeds, because fans are only really useful at lower speeds. Below 150 kilometers per hour, it's a fan car. Hydraulically activated panels seal off the front and rear of the floor, while the skirts seal the sides creating an enclosed space under the car. Then a massive 390 mm fan at the rear driven by the gearbox creates powerful suction. This generates one ton of pure downforce and unlike wings and diffusers, it works even when the car's standing still. It's a giant vacuum cleaner, literally sucking the car onto the track. However, with, with ground effect aerodynamics, the level of downforce is going to increase uh, by the square of the speed. That's why once the car reaches 150 kilometers per hour, the panels retract, allowing air to flow naturally through those ground effect tunnels. We've changed from fan aero to organic aero. The blades on the fan even rotate to reduce the disruption to the airflow. It's a complete change of how the car generates its aerodynamic grip. But running the fans isn't free. It draws 150 horsepower from the engine through the gearbox. That's like having a VW Golf engine to just power the fan. But it's a small price to pay for the ability to generate serious downforce in the slow corners. And the engineering doesn't stop there. 
take the side pods. They're a perfect example of how Sebastian is pushing every detail to the limits. Most race cars have fixed inlets for radiators, but Le Pinnacle has something different. Each side pod has three separate openings and two of them can close completely. But what's the point of them closing? Well, when you're flat out on a straight, you don't need as much cooling air. The car's moving so fast that even a smaller opening provides enough airflow. So at high speeds, those electric actuators close two of the inlets, dramatically reducing drag and increasing top speed. And it doesn't stop at the inlets. Look at those black stripes on the side. Those are the radiator cores, and they're doing something clever. They're actually twisted, a technique that was banned in Formula One. The system is crowned by these red chimneys and slots on the side pods. And these are clever. They have two purposes. First, they vent the hot radiator air, but they also act as aerodynamic end plates, guiding the air that flows over the top of the side pods and directing it precisely towards the rear diffuser, and so increasing downforce further. But perhaps the most striking feature of Le Pinnacle might be its wheels. At first glance, they look like something from a land speed record car. They are covered with, with this kind of uh, teardrop shape because this is basically the, the optimum shape as for reducing the, the drag. And these aren't just simple covers. They're an integral part of the suspension. They're mounted directly to the wheel assembly and upright, meaning they move up and down with the wheels. And at the front, they even turn with the steering. This design allows the covers to sit incredibly close to the wheels, only allowing for the slight tire expansion at high speeds. And while the front wheels are 18 inch designs like current F1 cars, the rears are classic 13 inch, just like F1 used before 2022. And this approach has multiple purposes. The larger front wheels allow for bigger brake discs, while the smaller rear wheels help to manage the massive torque from that 1600 horsepower engine. The covers also work with the barge boards to manage tire wake, the turbulent air created by spinning wheels, which can be a pain for aerodynamics. The front covers guide this disturbed air away from the car, keeping the flow to the rear as clean as possible. Speaking of managing complex airflows, if you want to master the science behind F1 aerodynamics, join former Ferrari, Benetton and Sauber aerodynamic genius Willem Toet for our Driver 61 education program. From ground effects to vortex management, learn from over 30 years of F1 experience. You can join the waitlist for the course with the link below. So let's move on to the body of Le Pinnacle. And of course, it's not about looks. Every surface precisely manages airflow. The side pods and bodywork are designed to create one continuous wing surface working together with the ground effect tunnels below. But one of the most interesting features is the roll hoop behind the driver's head. And yes, it might look familiar, although it's a single blade design, something Sebastian worked on at Sauber before it was banned in Formula One. The roll hoop is visible through transparent Lexan panels, showing off its organic 3D printed structure. And while it looks incredible, there's also serious engineering behind it. The single blade design creates less aerodynamic disturbance, sending clear air to the rear wing and therefore making it work more efficiently. And looking at the rear of the car, the rear wing might look fairly conventional with its DRS system for reducing drag on the straights. But unlike the rest of the car that optimizes every surface for performance, Sebastian made a conscious decision to compromise here. I have to say that the rear wing is only aerodynamic element on the car which was compromised uh, a little bit for uh, styling. There is no clear uh, end plates. And when you have a car generating this much downforce from its floor and fan system, you can afford to make the rear wing a bit prettier, I suppose. But what's truly clever about Le Pinnacle is how it manages all of these different aerodynamic systems. And the car uses just three active elements, hydraulics for the floor seals, hydraulics for the DRS system, and electric actuators for the side pods. But why not just make everything active? One could say in a, in a completely open formula, you can have 100 of, uh, of uh, aerodynamic devices, all, uh, all movable. But practically, it's, it's, more, it's more complicated than that because, of course, every time you have a, uh, an active aero device, you need uh, an actuator, you need control units. So instead of adding loads more complexity with loads of active systems, Sebastian found a smarter solution using the natural flexibility of materials, something known as aeroelasticity. 
This means that at high speeds, wings bend and flatten, reducing drag, and then flex back up again to higher wing angles at slower speeds, where the extra downforce is required. Now, in Formula 1, they strictly control this kind of flexibility most of the time, but with no rules, Le Pinnacle can use it to full effect, getting many of the benefits of active aero without the weight and complexity of extra actuators and controllers. So what would a car like this actually do on track? Through simulations and CFD analysis, Le Pinnacle has shown some incredible potential. At the Barcelona circuit, it would lap between 10 and 15 seconds faster than current Formula 1 cars. To put that into perspective, that's roughly the same gap as between F1 and F3. And it would make that time up everywhere, braking, cornering and acceleration. But perhaps the most remarkable thing about the Pinnacle isn't its performance, it's the cost. While a modern F1 team spends around $135 million per year chasing tenths of a second, this entire project would cost far less. I would say uh, seven, seven, seven digits uh, number, but I, 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 I seven digit numbers, I think. That's right. A car that's potentially 15 seconds a lap faster than F1 could be built for less than 10 million pounds. And this points to something fascinating about modern motorsport. When engineers aren't constrained by regulations, they often find simpler solutions. No complex front wings, no intricate barge boards, just clean, efficient aerodynamics, working together as one system. And this is what makes Le Pinnacle so special. It's a glimpse of what's possible when engineers go wild. For 15 years, Sebastian has been designing his dream, pushing what's possible. And I love this project as it reminds me of the early days of Formula One, IndyCar and Can-Am. Wild's unbounded engineering. If you'd like to know how an F1 aero legend would approach an F1 car with no rules, check out this video up here. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.